Hey, what's up? It's Andrew here from Offshore Audio, bringing you tips and tricks to make you a better live sound engineer. Today, we're going to talk about DI boxes. What is a DI box? Where do we use it? Why do we use it? What are all the things on a DI box? How do we get the most out of our DI box? I've seen a lot of people use DI boxes in wonderful, strange ways. And I think most people at the beginning just think of a DI box as a glorified jack to XLR converter. But it's so much more than that. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to identify when to use a DI box and know exactly why you're going to do that. We're going to dive into what a DI box is and when to use it, advanced features on the DI box, and active and passive DI boxes. What's the difference when to use them? So without further ado, let's dive in. One way of defining what a DI box is, is it's a little box that transforms an unbalanced high impedance signal into a balanced low impedance signal. And usually as a byproduct of that, it takes something in on a jack and puts it out again on an XLR cable, a microphone cable. Ignoring the fact that no one makes 30 meter long, 100 feet long jack cables for guitars, instruments like guitars, acoustic guitars, bass guitars, come on these jack cables, right? And they're unbalanced cables. Now, we want to get those signals to the mixer, which is quite often quite far away. It can be, you know, 10, 20 meters away. What's that, like 50 feet away from the stage? And even if someone made a cable long enough for you to do that, by the time the signal got to the mixer, it would have completely degraded and sound terrible. One thing our DI box does is it allows us to plug the unbalanced signal into the DI box. It turns it into a balanced signal on an XLR cable. And most stages, have stage boxes with XLR connection. Now you can connect it to the stage box and transport that balanced signal intact all the way up to your mixer. Great. So another thing that it does, I said, is it changes the impedance of the signal. Now, impedance is basically electrical resistance. That's a really simplified definition of it, but you don't need to know exactly why right now. We'll get into that later. What you do need to know is that the high impedance signal that comes out of a guitar Let's say it's like 150,000 ohms, right? That's completely different to the low impedance signal that comes out of a microphone. The microphone inputs on a mixing desk are looking for a low impedance signal. Let's say 1,000 ohms instead of 150,000 ohms. Long story short, these are not compatible. If you somehow did manage to connect that guitar signal straight into the mixer, into that microphone input, it would sound dreadful. And as audio engineers, we're looking to preserve fidelity. We're looking to keep stuff as high quality as possible for the best possible experience. So this DI box allows you to plug in this super high impedance signal, right? And it just breaks it down to a manageable level, a low impedance level that you can then connect to a microphone input. So now we connect our guitar into our microphone input. We have control in the mixer and everything's dandy. So a little bit more about this sort of impedance mismatch thing. Because sometimes on a mixer, you have line level inputs, which are on a jack. And a mistake I really commonly see is that pub musicians, performers, troubadours, they just see a jack input and they think, my guitar's on a jack, in we go, right? But that jack input is calibrated for line level, which is not the same as an instrument level signal. So if you connect your acoustic guitar straight into that line level signal, again, you destroy the fidelity of the signal. You'll lose loads of top end, you'll lose a great deal of the signal, it'll sound dreadful. This is again where DI boxes come in. They allow you to interface properly with the mixer. You don't need to know the numbers. You don't need to know exact definitions of impedance. You do need to know that the signals come out of a guitar and a keyboard, for example, and a microphone are totally different. And we need to optimize the signal for the input that's going into. Just because it has a jack input on it does not mean that you can connect to it. So now we have an idea about what a DI box is, right? What sources do we use them on? You probably have an idea of this already, but basically instruments on the stage, guitars, acoustic guitars, bass guitars, keyboards, samplers, most of these output unbalanced signals on a jack cable, which we can then plug into our DI box, convert to a balanced mic level signal and send it on its way on the stage box to our mixer. Isn't everything lovely? So let's chat a little bit about all the advanced features that we find in these DI boxes, because they're always a little bit more than just a jack input and an XLR output. First up, the greatest feature of them all, the ground lift. Often when you connect multiple things together in an electrical system, like a PA system, you can end up with this hum of the electricity. 
If you plug your guitar into a guitar amplifier and you get this hum, you can try connecting a DI box in between the two and then lifting the ground. And basically what that does is it disconnects the ground pin from the chassis of the DI box, isolates the two sides of it. And it means that this sort of loop where the electricity flows is broken. And quite a lot of the time, it cleans up your signal. If you've got hum, try lifting the ground. Another thing that they have quite a lot of the time is a pad. This allows you to connect higher input signals, right? Higher level signals. Sometimes a sampler or a keyboard or even an active bass has really high level output and it's possible for it to distort the electronics in the DI box. By engaging the pad, we can store that out right at the source before any distortion has happened. I've got a whole video on pads, which I'll link to. Check that out if you want to know more about them. The final really common feature that you find in these is a through output. What's this? Through output is just an exact copy of the signal that you plug in. These two sockets are just linked. It means that you can plug your bass, for example, into the DI box, and then you plug the through into the amplifier, and you essentially have an unbroken chain from your bass into your amplifier. You can just play the bass into the amplifier as you would normally. But we as sound engineers can then take a feed off of that bass, right, which has been impedance matched and balanced so that it's ready to go into the mic inputs on our mixer, while the bassist's on stage experience is unaltered. Really, really useful. We talked about the signal levels and the impedance being appropriate for you know, the source and the input, the source and the destination. It's the same with the bass amplifier. It doesn't want to see that post DI box mic level signal, right? Which is why this through output needs to be before any of the electronics of the DI box. That bass needs to go into the DI box and out again, unaltered. Otherwise, the bass amplifier is gonna be unhappy about it. Let's round it off with active versus passive DI boxes. Active DI boxes require power. That can be in the form of a battery or phantom power through the microphone cable that you connect. Pretty much every mixer nowadays has phantom power. And in reviews and stuff, if you do some reading about it, usually the fidelity is slightly higher when you use phantom power. Plus there's no possibility for the batteries to run out. And the reason these active DI boxes need power is because they have electronic circuits inside that are powered that do the transforming of the signal, changing of the impedance and the level. Passive ones, on the other hand, are basically just a transformer in a box. You plug in one side and passively, through the electrical components inside the box, the signal is changed to the mic level signal that we need and want. Now it's kind of horses for courses, right? Both tools will get the job done in a pinch. I'll take a passive DI box on an acoustic guitar rather than no DI box on an acoustic guitar. But if you think of them a little bit like dynamic microphones versus condenser microphones, both will work in a pinch, but the condenser is maybe more suited to more detailed tasks like acoustic guitar, where dynamic is better for brute force like a snare. According to Radio, who make loads of great DI boxes, on their website, they generally, as a rule, specify use a passive DI box on active sources and an active DI box on passive sources. So if you have something like a sampler or a keyboard, you can use your passive DI box for that. But if you've got something more detailed, lower level signal maybe, like an acoustic guitar, a bass without active electronics, just think about using your active DI box. You'll get a more detailed signal, more clarity in the top end, that sort of thing. But try it out, you'll see your own results. I'm not trying to tell you the electronic difference and the difference in design of these two DI boxes. I just want you to be able to make a decision if you've got a couple of them in front of you. If you have four DI boxes, two active, two passive, and four instruments that need DIs on the stage, I just want you to be able to make an educated decision. These ones are gonna be passive, these ones are gonna be active. So let's sum it up. What's a DI box? What do we use them on? DI boxes turn unbalanced, high impedance signals into balanced microphone level signals, which are lower impedance. They take in a jack cable, which is usually unbalanced in an instrument, and the output on a microphone cable. What do we use them on? Instruments on the stage. Acoustic guitars, bass guitars, keyboards, samplers, these kind of things. And so the big summary there is different signal types, and we are using a DI box to convert to a signal type that the mixer is happy with. Advanced features on the DI box. Ground lift. Get rid of electrical hum. Brilliant. Pad. Plug in really loud things. No distortion. Through input. The bassist doesn't even need to know that you DI'd their bass. 
Finally, active versus passive DI boxes. Active needs power, phantom power or a battery, passive does not. As a general rule, active is better for passive sources like acoustic guitars, bass guitars, while passive you can use on active sources such as samplers, keyboards, or basses with active electronics. So I hope you found that helpful and that now you have a better idea of when to use the DI box, how to use one properly, and why we use DI boxes. If you did find it helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Let's me know to keep making more videos. And also I'll leave a bunch of links down below in the description to a few free resources that I've created to help you in your journey as a live sound engineer. Until next time, I'll say goodbye.